I'm Vin. I'm sorry. And this is Corrosion of Conformity. In the arms of the God. In the arms of God. For Speaking overshadow Sean. For the big homie. For Johnny Topical Political Commentary, you can hit us up in Middle America with Vin and Sorry. Lively discussion happening in that in that thread. Good Lord. Uh, there are multiple ways to get your song reviewed, dear listener. My favorite way is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon where you will meet the amazing Leah of the Village, Pony of the Village, the Mighty Ian, the Brilliant Kellen Dross, etc., etc., etc. One dollar at the gate gets you in. You pool your points with your alliance, and that helps determine what songs that we review. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a filthy capitalist like Sorry or Overshadow Sean, and you want to hop, skip, and jump in front of everybody, you simply leverage your capital, 125 bucks gets you straight to the head of the line, and then you drop down a $75 rate once you do it three times. So that is what happened with Overshadow Sean, and we are now going to listen to the song. Hold on, let me get my lyrics. Okay, we're good.
switch from being a, a lover of country music to a lover of metal when you feel that that excitement inside when it gets heavy. <laughs> Stop, I'm gonna have to clean this. <laughs> oh. Did you hear that shit? I love it when it gets heavy. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's so crazy. That must feel so satisfying oh. to play. That just satisfying to listen to? Must feel so satisfying to play. Oh my gosh, Overshadow Sean. Very good, very good selection. Well played, sir. Well played, sir. <laughs> There, oh, I was, I was watching The Office today, wasn't, I wasn't feeling good, and our one-year-old was like tooling around the room, and there was like a part where they were like playing all kinds of different music, and then that weird old guy that always sits in the back, whatever his name <coughs> is, he was on an electric guitar, and the minute the electric guitar came on, Orion stopped, <gasps> he got like this big smile on his face, and he didn't move from his eyes being glued to the TV until that electric guitar was gone. I'm like, oh, we have a metal boy, oh! Yeah, I show him the video, the 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 sample video mm -hmm. of uh, what I sent to the guys. For, yeah. For this, he loves watching that. Shit. He's watched it over and over yeah. and over. Yeah. He's a, more, more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a little metalhead. Yeah. Well, yeah. he went to a lot of concerts in my room. But this was. This was this was good. This the was intro was crazy. Sonically speaking, the intro was crazy. I'd never really heard an intro like that. I love when bands allow, you know, basically demand of their audience to be a little bit patient. Mm. Just be patient. It's coming. Mm. Don't worry. That's that's what. Uh, <laughs> but I also like being punched in the face. In the noise. Well, well, well. The funny thing is, is like, you know, I, I was saying I, I wasn't really a, a giant fan of their most recent Tool record. And of course, Sarcast is like, that's because you're immature and you just want <laughs> draggle knocking, draggle, dragging your knuckles metal, blah, 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 blah. You, you, when you get older, you'll appreciate it. You'll get old. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not it, because this song took a while to develop and it didn't get really, really, really heavy to the end. But I just didn't feel like the tool record went anywhere. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, you uh, thought this took a while to develop? Well, yeah, I mean, it was like, what, what? two or three minutes before they got into the, <laughs> like, before he started singing? How long does it take when we start singing? I mean, this is 37 seconds in. Still an intro. Yeah, but... One minute. Yeah, but it had a good sound. For, yeah, I see what you're saying. You need to start talking till like... Yeah, I see what you're saying, but... But, but no, that's good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he... Most people, they want to... You know, okay, do a little 4-4 four four at the beginning and then go for it. You know what I mean? See, I felt like I, I got, like, assaulted with it right at the beginning because it had just a good sound to it. Shh. And... and what I love that he did vocally, that's like uh, Tom Araya type vocals from Slayer. Like the way that he was doing his vocals, like, mm -hmm. here, let me put on uh, the show is why, total why. Like the way that he sings versus the way Tom Araya sings, watch. So if I, let me see, total war, Tom Araya. No, it's not Tom Araya, it's Slayer. Slayer. Total war, total war. The war ensemble song. Why are so, people staying 10 times <sighs> <laughs> Why are we paying 10 times? That's a good question. More ads. Any day now, guy. Let's get this one. Alright, so then play him. Which part? Where are you Just going? any of his vocals. Like, you go down to like. Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah. It's almost like Tom Mariah. Did Tom Mariah guest on that song? You That's know what I mean? Wild. Like he sounds exactly yeah, like Tom Mariah in that joint. Um, but but I loved it. I loved it. Like I think. I think I, that's my probably my favorite thing about Slayer is uh, Araya's voice. Like it's just a very distinct sound. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I've got to just crazy. check it out. Conformity. To see if he did guess. I can't believe how. If that's not the same person, they sound. That's pretty crazy. Really ridiculously like. Yeah, no, it, it's it was them. Like, wow, he sounds just like that's crazy. Yeah, I mean it's pretty insane. So I mean, good lord. See, I put Tom Araya in Google there for the thing, but it's not it's not pumping anything. A bit of Tom Araya. Hold on. 
Screaming vocal styles reminds me a bit of Tom Mariah. Nice. <laughs> I'm officially nice. certified. Mm, real nice. metal. What is one, total one. Uh, did he put any, like, okay, so lyrically, this song is crazy. Uh, lyrically, I don't know what's going on, but I was crazy. thinking... <laughs> What? Sometimes when I do a reaction with you, I feel like I am also watching the reaction because I really don't know what the lyrics are about, but I was like, oh, I can't wait for Vin to break this down. <laughs> <laughs> like if I wasn't on this channel with you and I heard this song, I'd come, I'd come listen to your review because I want to know what's going on. So it's the title track and it's song 12. It's the last song on the, on the, on the record, but it's the title track. <clears throat> this looks like some Christian preaching, though. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, words make fuel the power of fools to be used, shadow... That reminds me of Proverbs. What? That beginning piece right there. What about it? <laughs> well... Which verse or whatever? Words make fuel the power of fools to be used. It, well, it, it reminded me of that... Oh, people are going to be very insulted, but... That little green guy that's on, um, Star Wars and stuff. You know how he always says stuff backwards? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he kind of starts in the end and goes back. Yeah, yeah. Words make fuel the power of fools to be used. It basically sounded like he was saying, uh, fools will use the power of words to fuel their foolishness. But, like, they, they like, flipped it around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so it's... So you it's, were like, wait, it's a, it, what? Yeah. <laughs> who, who, who was the little guy? You know Yoda. Little, yo Yoda. Yoda? Yeah, yeah, is it Yoda? Yeah, yeah. a little baby Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> um, back to the wall, now the one that you have served, that you serve has abandoned your call. Desire backfires, you become the opposed where you once had aspired. Um, that to me looks like maybe like your religion failed you. Back to the wall, now the one that you serve has abandoned your call. So like, he didn't answer your prayer or whatever. So now your desire backfires and you, you go to the opposite side because, you know, mm -hmm. the, the first prayer didn't get answered. Yeah, a lot of people have done that. And it's interesting because it says you become the opposed, which, of course, Hasatan, or Satan in the Old Testament, is not a proper name. It is a title. Yep. It's opposer or accuser. So yep. I don't know if he was going that deep into it, but, you know, desire backfires. You become the devil where you want. You become the Satan where you once had aspired, basically. You could read it that way just you know, if they were doing that. I'm not sure if he was going that deep into it, but it wouldn't surprise me. I think that there are some times where it, like, if you really looked at the facts, it's like, wow, it does look like God abandoned that person. But then I think that there are other times where I think that people are just in a particularly bad mood. And so then, like, it's the half, the glass half empty, or that is it half full? Like, we have a friend of ours, and she posted, she was like, it was like this quote, I, I can't remember how it goes, but it's basically like, you know, that you you prayed to the sky and like God didn't answer and the the devil answered you back. You know what I mean? Like, and then but then it, so. Okay. She, oh. And then like three days later, she's like, God has been the only one that's ever been there for me. He's you know what I mean? Like oh, so I'm like 100%. okay, so that day she was just having a bad day. You know. One hundred. I just think that like ha having not having kids puts you at a disadvantage in the God discussion. She has kids. No, I'm talking about in general. Oh, yeah. oh, I agree. Um, because once agree. you have kids, a lot of the problem of evil stuff gets explained pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Like, and a lot of unanswered prayers get explained very easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like your kid in his little world, he believes that a chocolate bar would be just fine for. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and you know, unanswered prayers run the gamut from, I want this promotion to I don't want my mother to die of cancer. Mm -hmm. But when you experience as a parent so many times withholding things for your children because you know things they don't, to me, that's one of the things that reconciled the problem with evil in my mind. A lot of the, I gotta tell you, a lot, a lot of the modern atheistic arguments really aren't very compelling to me. But the problem with evil is, is a very, you know, mm -hmm. very, very significant one that really did not get tied up for me until. I started having kids. Yeah. And once I started having kids, I was like, oh, good for you. Mm -hmm. You know, like... Yeah, it does give you different, different yeah. perspectives and things. So, like, that... God doesn't do that, and then you become opposed to where you once had aspired, and you fall from the arms of God. Mm -hmm. So I think, like, the arms of God here is, like, it's a way to talk about falling from grace, leaving behind yeah. your religion, 
but he doesn't celebrate it. Sins are ignored, the price you paid has been paid once before, which obviously as Christians we would say that. Mm -hmm. Say that, you know, your sin has already been paid for, um, so, you know, move on in the new life of Jesus, but now basically the guy is, is stuck without, you know, his sins being paid for because he's lost faith, I think is what he's. I, I, <clears throat> maybe I was getting confused with this song because Corrosion of Conformity, they're not Christian, right? No, they're not a Christian man at all. I don't it's think just a very interesting topic very, for them to, yeah. to go into this. Okay, carry on. And, you know, the storm has revealed clarity brewing now. It's you that is ruined. Cast a veil, the splinter has turned to a nail. Yeah, Ooh. that was wild, right? Yeah, like life is just getting from bad to worse. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, that's pretty insane. <clears throat> Light has revealed your soul is beginning to seal. That's a crazy line. Visions have appeared, delusions of death drawing near. Truth sets you free all along you were blind. Now you see as you fall from the arms of God. So like, that's pretty insane. That is, when it says your soul is beginning to seal, yeah. <clears throat> that line's, you know, I've had a couple people from the, the village ask me about the unforgivable sin or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, if you're concerned enough to ask me about it, you have not committed it. Mm -hmm. Because the unpardonable sin, you know that when you're, you know you're in the middle of the unpardonable sin when you don't care whether or not. And, and it's not like the whole, I don't care, but it's like an internal apathy, yeah. unable to feel anything yeah. about it. You yeah, know, because some people drunk. say, I don't care because right. they actually do care and they don't want to care. Right. So we can never... God see, he sees through all that. He knows exactly what's up. Biblically speaking, especially in the New Testament, that happens to people. Mm -hmm. And it, it happens to people who are inundated with truth over and over and over yep. and over again, and they reject it over and over right. and over and right. over again. You know, he's calling it the sealing of the heart, but... Biblically, it's called the hardening of the heart, or the stiffening of the neck, or mm -hmm. whatever, or the, the you know, blinding the eyes, or like having a, a thick head, yeah. you know, like uh, God told Jeremiah, I'm going, I'm going to send you to a rebellious Ezekiel, I'm going to send you to a rebellious people. Don't be afraid of them. I will make your forehead diamond hard. You know, like it's it's one of those types of situations. So the sealing of the soul is basically, I'm interpreting that like, it's like completely flush so that nothing can get inside of it because it's completely sealed up. Mm -hmm. And if you're in that situation, you're done. Mm -hmm. And I tell people all the time, like when God's mad at somebody, you know, it's not the fire and brimstone stuff when God's mad at somebody. A lot of times, especially in Amos, you know, like in Amos the two or three, he says, I overthrew some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, but you still wouldn't come to me. Yeah. So that tells me that those types of actions are designed for God to call out to you. But then when you go to Romans 2, where Paul says, you know, you foolish person, do you misinterpret the kindness of God? It's meant, um, to, lead to, it's meant to lead you to repentance. What the hell is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so all these things, like from a scriptural perspective, you know, work together to talk about when you have the opportunity to believe you should take it. Mm -hmm. Because there may come a day when God goes, okay, I'm not talking to you anymore. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Mm -hmm. I'll see you later. Um, that's the ultimate act of judgment from a biblical perspective, not having your city destroyed or whatever. Mm -hmm. The ultimate act of judgment is God, you know, hits the mute button and conform confirms you in your hardened heart. Um I don't know if I want to talk about that story. Nah, no, I'm not talking about that story. Uh, as you fall from the arms of God, frozen still, free, you, frozen still you, your freedom is testing your will, I think is what it meant to say. And what, what did you... What did I you didn't understand. That? Frozen still, I, to, I just switched that to be your. Yeah. Frozen still, your freedom is testing your will. Yeah. I didn't... I, I didn't know what, what this was going on. I, I really didn't know what this song was about because, like I said at the beginning, I was confused because it seemed kind of preachy and it seemed like something that would have been coming from a Christian band. Right. So I didn't. <laughs> right. I didn't know where they were going with it, but carry on. Yeah, I mean that that that's a pretty crazy line, and I, I think he's he's kind of exploring the concept of free will. 
because if your heart really is hardened and you cannot, you reach a point where you can't believe, mm -hmm. then you're frozen in that. Mm -hmm. And so now your free will, the concept of free will is being tested because you can't move from the place you're at spiritually. So you don't have the power within yourself to do it, then how can you have a free will? Mm -hmm. Which I agree with, by the way. I, I took Augustine's side over Pelagius or uh, Luther's side over Erasmus or Calvin's side <laughs> over Arminius. <laughs> This has been going on for quite some for quite time. Quite some time, yeah. Pain has receded, now you've lost your own will to believe, believe. You're at war with your God. That's a crazy line, man. Mm -hmm. With it, Romans 8, the natural man um, is hostile toward God. Mm -hmm. It does not submit to God's law, nor can he. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Yeah. So... The, the term there for when it says a natural man or the the person, the hu the natural man is a description of a human being prior to his conversion mm -hmm. or prior to God changing their heart. It says the natural man um, is, at, is, is in hostility or enmity toward God. And the Greek word for hostility or enmity is ekthra, mm -hmm. which basically means deep disdain or war. So... That's the biblical diagnosis of, of humanity is that we are at war with our God. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that he says you're at war with your God. That's what I was going to say. Go ahead. Because he says your. He doesn't say you're at war with God. Correct. Like, because he says your, it's like, okay, I actually don't, you know, I feel like it was more like you're at war with, there was still something between you and God because you're at war with him, but he's your God. So I, I liked that. Yeah, I think he's, maybe he's talking about like, because uh, it's saying you fell from the arms of, of God, and then here it says rise. Mm -hmm. These are the things that condition the man, seldom shown the ways to understand. Heart was still beating, but you know it was true. Locked in the cage and shown the wrong view. Standing alone like a lightning rod. Sleep tight, my friend, you're in the arms of God. <clears throat> so I, I don't know, like, if he's talking about somebody died or whatever. Um, but he's just basically commentary on human nature, the nature of the will, that type of thing. And then, boom, he did that spoken word thing, and then they bounced out of that set like crazy. Mm -hmm. I do you think when he says standing alone like a lightning rod, obviously a lightning rod is going to take all the heat, it's going to take all the lightning that's coming, right? Um, but it says, Sleep tight, my friend, you're in the arms of God. Like, do you think that at the end of it, he's saying, like, you're not in a good position, but at the same time, God's got you? Mm. Or, or is it like, is it like one of those, you know, sleep tight, you're in the arms of God, like, it's actually like saying the opposite. Okay, so I, I want to look at this, because it says, corrosion conforming in the arms of God, dedicated to Dimebag Daryl. Oh. And he's going to say something at the beginning of This next song goes out to a friend of ours who's not here anymore, and I wish he was. I'm thinking about him every fucking day. His name was Dimebag Daryl, so... Respect! Uh, I know you guys miss his ass as much as I do, so this song's for y'all, too. This song's about in the arms of God. We'll see you. See that? Yeah. So that last line, I mean... So then it's a positive. Sleep tight, my friend. You're in the arms of God. I think... I, I just... I feel like it can go either way. What do you mean? Like, because it's that song, well, yes, but I, I'm not certain, I'm not certain that that was the original intention. Mm -hmm. You know, these things can, like, get adopted, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Um, here he is again, he's talking about the song. Well, uh, in the arms of God, uh, in the arms of God was basically just a metaphor, you know, it was something that I've been thinking about a lot, and, and gone through my head a lot, and... Uh, the uh, like arms of God meaning nuclear arms people being killed in the name of God uh, arms of God meaning death people dying period going to the arms of God you know heaven or you know a place of song is there any political message in there well? um, I mean yeah I mean there's just songs like Infinite War you know pretty, pretty obvious you know Stonebreaker was another song that I kind of had pointed towards uh you know, politics and, and politicians in general. You know, Wicked on the Mountain, I was kind of referring to about uh, Capitol Hill. Um, I th you talked about Stonebreaker, I think it's a... Uh... Yeah, <clears throat> so there you go. So that, mm -hmm. that gives some context to the song. So 
But that's the thing about Arnica and Metastasize. Oh, yeah. I think now, after Don died, every time he plays it, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. But he, he's he's trying to he's trying to combine all these different situations. So brilliant. I mean, I cannot get over how brilliant these guys are. <laughs> just the depths of the lyricism is crazy. And then just that heaviness, bro. It's crazy. Oh my word, it was wicked good. All the Patreon picks this, this last couple days, just this last a, week. Oh, oh, oh. Whenever you say Patreon, I always think you're, you're talking about the alliances, but this, yeah. Just last week, we, yep. we just had some ridiculous, yeah, it's ridiculous so true. bangers. This song's another banger. It's a 10 for me. It was a 10 for me as well. Yeah, I, I hate handing out these 10s like Skittles, man. I'm handing <laughs> out 10s like JP2 was <laughs> Handing out canonizations. Only my Catholic. Aww. Only my Catholic friends know that one. Um, yeah, but I, it's gotta be, I mean, it, it's gotta be a 10. Mm -hmm. The heaviness, the the lyricism, the whole thing. Good it, choice, good choice for Yeah, fun. and it just makes me wanna go play again. <laughs> play guitar right now, come up with a badass riff like that, and I'll never do it in my life. Huh? <laughs> All right, what did you give it? I gave it a 10, 10. as well, yeah. There you are, dear listener, Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.